In this video, we're going to focus on balancing chemical equations. So let's start with this example. Chromium plus elemental sulfur reacts to form chromium-3 sulfide. In order to balance the equation, we need to make sure that the number of atoms on the left side is equal to the number of atoms on the right side. And to do that, we need to introduce coefficients numbers in front of the reactants and products. On the left side you have the reactants and on the right side are the products. So how can we balance both sides of the equation? Let's focus on sulfur. We have eight sulfur atoms on the left, three on the right. Sometimes you want to identify the least common multiple of eight and three. If you're not sure, just multiply eight and three, which is 24. So that indicates we want to have 24 sulfur atoms on the left and on the right. In order to have it on the left, we need to put a 3 as a coefficient. 3 times 8 is 24. And if we put an 8 over here, 8 times 3 is 24. So now the number of sulfur atoms are the same on both sides. So now we can move on to balancing the number of chromium atoms. On the right side, we have 8 times 2 chromium atoms, or 16 chromium atoms. So therefore, we need to put a 16 in front of CR. And now, everything is balanced. We have 16 chromium atoms on both sides, and 24 sulfur atoms on both sides. Now, let's try another example. Mercury oxide, when heated, decomposed to elemental mercury and oxygen gas. Feel free to pause the video and work on balancing the equation. Now right now the number of mercury atoms are the same on both sides. However, we have two oxygen atoms on the right side and only one on the left side. So in order to have two on both sides, we need to put a two as the coefficient in front of mercury two oxide. So now we have two oxygen atoms on both sides, but we got two mercury atoms on the left, only one on the right. So therefore, we also need to put a 2 here. And if you don't see a number, it's the same as having a 1 in front of it. Now the reaction is balanced. There are two oxygen atoms on both sides and two mercury atoms on both sides. Now let's look at another example. Aluminum metal reacts with an aqueous solution of copper 2 chloride and it produces an aqueous solution of aluminum chloride plus copper metal. Balance the equation. Now right now it appears as if the aluminum atoms are balanced, they're both one on each side, and we have one copper atom on the same side, I mean on each side. However, the number of chlorine atoms is not the same. If we multiply 2 and 3, that's 6. So ideally, we want to get 6 chlorine atoms on both sides. To do that, let's put a 3 in front of copper chloride, because 3 times 2 is 6. And let's put a 2 in front of aluminum chloride, because 2 times 3 is 6. Now the number of chlorine atoms are balanced. So now we have 3 copper atoms, so let's put a 3 in front of Cu and we have two aluminum atoms on the right side so let's put a two in front of AL. Now everything is balanced. Now let's look at another example. Potassium chlorine, when heated, decomposes into potassium chloride plus oxygen gas. Go ahead and balance the chemical equation. Right now we have one potassium atom on both sides, and the number of chlorine atoms are the same on both sides. The only thing that's different is the number of oxygen atoms. So 2 times 3 is 6. Therefore, we want to get 6 oxygen atoms on both sides. So let's start by putting a 2 in front of KClO3 because 2 times 3 is 6. And let's put a 3 in front of O2. So now we have 6 oxygen atoms on both sides. Now, notice that we have a 2 in front of K and Cl. Therefore, we need to put a 2 in front of KCl. 
Now everything is balanced. So this example wasn't that difficult. And some problems will not be. Others will be harder. Now let's look at another example. Let's say if we have C3H8 propane reacting with oxygen gas producing carbon dioxide plus water. So this is a combustion reaction. It's very exothermic. It generates a lot of heat. Let's balance the equation. Now, when dealing with combustion reactions, personally, I prefer to balance the carbon atoms first. There are three carbon atoms on the left, but only one on the right. So therefore, I need to put a three in front of CO2 so that I can have three carbons on both sides. Next, I'd like to move on to the number of hydrogen atoms. I have eight on the left only two on the right. So to get eight on both sides, I need to put a four in front of H2O because four times two is eight. Now the last thing that I like to balance for combustion reactions is the number of oxygen atoms. On the right side, we have six oxygen atoms from the three CO2 molecules because three times two is six. And four times one is four, so we have four oxygen atoms from the four water molecules. So therefore, we have a total of 10 oxygen atoms on the right side. So what number do we need to put in front of O2 to get 10 oxygens as well? Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we need to put a 5 in front of O2. And now the reaction is balanced. Let's try another combustion reaction. So let's say if we have ethanol, C2H5OH, plus O2, and it produces carbon dioxide and water. So we have another combustion reaction. Feel free to try this one. So there are two carbon atoms on the left. So therefore, I need to put a 2 in front of CO2 so I can have two carbon atoms on the right side. Now, let's move on to the number of hydrogen atoms. I have 5 plus 1, or 6 hydrogen atoms on the left side. So I need 6 on the right. 6 divided by 2, that's 3. So let's put a 3 in front of H2O. Now the last thing that we need to balance is the number of oxygen atoms. So we have 4 oxygen atoms from the 2 CO2 molecules. 2 times 2 is 4. And we have 3 oxygen atoms from the 3 water molecules. And 4 plus 3 is 7. Now, I already have one oxygen atom in ethanol. So to get a total of seven on the left side, I need six more. And six divided by two is three. So therefore, I need a three in front of O2. And this reaction is now balanced. Let's try a harder example. Ammonia reacts with oxygen gas to produce nitrogen monoxide and water. Go ahead and balance the reaction. So the number of nitrogen and oxygen atoms are currently the same on both sides. The only thing that's different is the hydrogen atoms. We have three on the left, two on the right. So two times three is six. Let's try to get six hydrogen atoms on both sides. So therefore, we need to put a two in front of NH3 because two times three is six, and we need a three in front of H2O. So now we have six hydrogen atoms on both sides. Now we have two nitrogen atoms on the left, but only one on the right. So therefore, we need to put a two in front of NO. So now the number of hydrogen atoms and nitrogen atoms are equal. So now let's move on to the oxygen atoms. We got two from NO, three from water, so that's a total of five. Now we need 5 on the left. 5 divided by 2 is 5 over 2. That's a fraction, which is the same as 2.5. Now, if you get a fraction, it's not the end of the world. You just simply need to know what to do. You want to get a whole number. So what I'm going to do is multiply everything by 2. Whatever this denominator is of the fraction, multiply by that number to get rid of the fraction. So 2 times 2, that's 4. So in front of NH3, I now need a 4. Now if you multiply 5 divided by 2 by 2, the 2's will cancel, leaving you with a coefficient of 5. 
Now I'm going to multiply NO by 2, so we're going to have 4 NO molecules instead of 2 now. Everything's going to double. And instead of 3 H2O's, it's going to be 6 water molecules. Now let's make sure everything is balanced. So on the left side, we have 4 times 3, or 12 hydrogen atoms. On the right side, 6 times 2 is still 12. So we have 12 hydrogen atoms on both sides. Now we have 4 nitrogen atoms on the left, 4 on the right. So that's equal. And we have 5 times 2, or 10 oxygen atoms. And this is 4 plus 6, which is 10. So the number of atoms are the same on both sides. Therefore, this reaction is complete. That's it.